So I have an interesting question to consider. When have you felt most alive? Think about that for a moment. Points in your life where you have felt most alive. Now, as I think about that for myself, um, you know, I, I have to get, I get spiritual and, and have to, I do think probably first and foremost of that moment when I, I gave my life to Jesus and, and, and literally it was at camp and I, we have students in here, you know what I'm talking about, camp is a neat experience, isn't it? It's like, man, it's like a piece of heaven on earth and, and just in a powerful way, uh, you hear God speaking and you're faced with an opportunity to respond like never before. I went there seven summers before I finally realized that everything he had done, he had done for me personally. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I prayed to him and asked him to save me. And I remember we were up uh, at a campfire up on a little mountain in Knott County, Kentucky. And I remember, I remember very vividly walking down off that little mountain, it was a bit of a walk to get back to our cabins, and feeling lighter, feeling freer, feeling different, and I felt alive, I felt alive. I think of other moments since then that I've had, uh, I think of my wedding day, you know, I think we feel most alive when we think about these moments in our lives where it's like, you know, nothing else matters right now but this moment, and that's when we feel, I think, most alive. And, and that's what I felt about that day. I was like, this is it. This is the big day. Been dating that girl five and a half years. Finally, she's going to let me put that ring on her finger. And she's going to be legally bound to be my wife. Um, I remember, I'll be honest with you, just being real, I was looking forward to the honeymoon too. I felt very alive about that as well. You know, uh, back in our day, uh, we had this campaign that was a real famous campaign called True Love Waits, where we encouraged uh, uh, everyone to, if you're, if you're not married, to abstain from sex until marriage. I signed that card, so I had that day circled. <laughs> and I will tell you this, uh, that night before, I was hanging out with our groomsmen in a little hotel room in LaGrange, Kentucky, and I was like, you know what, I think I should burn that card. I don't need it anymore after tonight. And so one of my groomsmen said, okay, if it don't burn, then you have to keep abstaining. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I didn't even think, I thought that was a weird thing to say. Well, it turns out I don't use a lighter very often, and he gave me his lighter to use, and he flicked it, and it worked. And he goes, here you go. And I flicked it, and it would not work. And this went on for minutes. Like, I kept flicking. I was like, why is it not working? I'm like, okay, you're doing something. What are you doing? And it turns out there's a little, apparently a little safety switch you hold, and you can flick on some of these lighters. I didn't know that. He was even doing stuff like he would rub it on his shirt and flick it. Man, it works. I'm like, hmm, <laughs> it's not working. What are you doing? And I finally realized what he was doing. I burned that thing and, and uh, put it in, I burned it over the toilet in the hotel room. Anyway. I felt alive. I felt alive during that week. And then I think of, and I'm looking over here at little Riley beers, and I, and I know that they could testify to this too. When you're having one of your children being born before your very eyes, I kid you not, you're thinking of nothing else at that moment, are you? It's all about this child is coming being born, a miracle of life, this creation that God used half my DNA to make. And, 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 and you just want to, you're thinking about let it be healthy, everything go well. And, and it's, a, it's a moment that is unbelievable. And that probably is another day where you feel so alive. Do you have all those big moments in life, right? Where you just, ah, oh, those, are, those are huge, those are great. You know, but... but that doesn't happen every day, does it? You know, I don't get saved every day. I don't go on my honeymoon every day. day. Uh, I don't, we don't have a birth of a child every day. You know, we don't have those things happening. Real life kind of happens as a grind, doesn't it? The grind of daily life, right? Where you go to work, where you go to school, where you do things you just got to do because you got to do it. You get up and repeat and then go to sleep and do it again. And, you know, there's bills to pay. Uh, there's food to make or find or buy to eat. <laughs> you know, we, we just have this daily grind. And I think sometimes in the midst of that grind, sometimes it feels like rather than us having life, life kind of has us. It kind of dictates 
to us. You ever feel that way sometimes? Where life is kind of dictating to you rather than you kind of having life? And then you add to that, for lack of a better way of putting it, our, our kind of our stuff, our junk, our junk. You add to that, well, you got the daily grind, which kind of can, can eventually sort of make it feel like you're just kind of going through the motions of life. But you add to that failure, you add to that sin, you add to that temptation, you add to that forgetfulness, you add to that unhealthy ways of thinking and living, you add to that relationship problems and our own selfishness, our own pettiness. You add all those things in and you're like, whew. Well, well, here's what I think, and I think this is kind of the point of not only today's message and the whole reason we're talking about what we're talking about, but as we talk about the Spirit, we began this sermon series last week, I think that these three words are the reason why there is such a thing as the Holy Spirit, and that is this, we need help. We, amen, bro. (laughs) We do. We need help. Everybody needs help. We desperately need help need his help. And that's where the Spirit comes in. We're going to be looking at a passage in John chapter 14 in the Bible. We'll look at a couple of verses in John 14 and a couple in John 15 and then a bigger one in John 16. I promise you it's a shorter reading than what it sounds. But what we're looking at together today is basically the farewell speech of Jesus. He's talking to his disciples, these men who have left everything to follow him, and and he's about to die on the cross. And he will step out of the grave, and he will ascend back into heaven, but the bottom line is they've walked with him and done life with him for three years, and that's going to stop. And he's preparing them for that. And so everything he says in John 14, 15, 16, 17, you can read it on your own, is all preparing for that. In fact, there's a beautiful prayer that Jesus prays for them uh, in this bigger passage. It's really cool. We're going to look at some things he says, though, in this passage about the Holy Spirit. And to me, this is like a primer on the Holy Spirit. This is like if there's the basic things you need to know and understand about the Holy Spirit, who he is and his role potential role in your life is right here from the very mouth of Jesus himself. So let's look at this together. We're going to be in John 14. I'm going to start with verse 15. Let me get over to it here. John 14, starting in verse 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now jump on down to verse 25, same chapter. John 14, 25 and 26 says, These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance All that I have said to you. Now, jumping into chapter 15, let me read to you verses 26 and 27. The last two verses of John 15 say this But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me. From the beginning. We'll talk more about that in a moment and what that means. And lastly, let's look at a passage in the next chapter, John 16. Read to you verses 5 through 15. It says, But now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you asks me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father. And you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. 
He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All right, a lot of stuff there. I want to sum up all that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in one sentence for you, and, and this is the way I would say it. The Holy Spirit is God dwelling in those who believe in Jesus and are born again. We talked about being born again in Christ last week, that when you place your faith in Jesus, you really believe in him, you hand over to him your old life, he gives you new life, you are reborn. And he says right here throughout these chapters that for those who have done that, the helper comes and lives in you forever. You have a helper that stays forever. Think about that for just a moment. It's better than Google. It's better than Siri, better than Alexa, better than all those other things, better than Dr. Phil, better than all the counseling you could potentially get. And I'm not saying those things are bad things. I Google and Siri all the time and, and I seek wise counsel. That's all good. But what I'm telling you is that you have, by faith in Jesus, this helper in you forever. In, in the Greek there, the word for helper they keep saying you notice he said it over and over again the helper's coming the helper's coming if I go that I will send the helper and the helper will be with you forever the word there's parakletos a lot of the bible scholars say paraclete which sounds like parakeet I have to be honest I think of parakeet when I hear that uh, which is probably a good metaphor because Jesus said the Holy Spirit is literally repeating to us everything from God the Father and God the Son he's repeating it to us he's declaring it to us over and over again but that word can be translated advocate counselor the best english word we have for what paraclete means is the word helper because it's such a broad array of things that the paraclete that this holy spirit does for us and in us in fact i want to go through a real quick list for you i mean it's kind of a big quick 12 point list of everything jesus said about the holy spirit just now okay number one is he will never leave you let that soak in for a moment he will never leave you he stays second he is in you third he teaches you said that over and over again jesus said he would teach you everything number four it says he says in 14 26 he reminds you <sighs> Amen to that. Anybody else need reminding? Over and over and over. I need reminding. And it's, it's not even the little things. It's, in fact, the really big things I need reminded of over and over again, such as who I am in Christ, what he has done for me. He reminds you. Number five, he testifies about Jesus. Let that soak in for a moment. He talked about, do you remember that passage where he says, the Holy Spirit will bear witness of me? That's testimony. That literally means a testimony. Like, a, like in a court of law, if you bear witness, you're giving a testimony on behalf of. The Holy Spirit testifies about Jesus. I think this is really huge. I don't know, if, I don't know if about you, but I'm amazed sometimes that I know who Jesus is and believe in him. Because this is a man who walked the earth in the flesh two millennia ago. To me, it seems like it would be easy to think of, uh, and I think there are people doing this to say, well, that's just a historic figure that was probably a pretty cool guy, and that's it. But that's not it. It's bigger than that. He is not only, <laughs> he wasn't a man that walked the earth in the flesh. He was God himself through whom all things were created and who sustains all things and who created you and who loves you and who died for you. And the only way we know that, and the only way you know that, or at least you're thinking about knowing that and believing in that, is because of the Spirit. He testifies about Jesus. Number six, he convicts the world about sin. Number seven, he convicts the world about righteousness. Number eight, he convicts the world about judgment. That's, I think, one of the more intriguing parts of that passage. I, I still try to wrap my mind around what, what Christ is trying to teach us there. But he's convicting not just those who believe in him, but the entire world. The, the Spirit's presence in the world by him being in believers who are still here, living out their faith, allows others who don't know him to feel the conviction of the Spirit about those three things. 
that there is such a thing as right and wrong, that there is such a thing as sin, there is such a thing uh, 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 that there are things that hurt God, bother God, anger God. The world does not know those things except through the Spirit and His work in you and through you. And even the good things, the things that we should be doing, the righteous living we should be experiencing, the world would have no clue about that if it were not for the Holy Spirit, specifically His Spirit in you, working in you and through you. Judgment, I'm amazed at how people are pretty much agnostic or atheist, but there's something about, there's something in them that says, there's going to come a time of reckoning. There's people I know who don't ever go to church who believe in a heaven or hell even. They still believe in that. They still embrace that idea. And I believe it's because of the presence of the Holy Spirit on this planet residing in believers. It's convicting the whole world that there is such a thing as sin, there is such a thing as righteousness, and there is such a thing as judgment. That's the Spirit's work. Number nine, he will guide you. Oh, I need that. Do you need that? Guidance. Lord, please show me. It's always tougher when you have choice A, B, and C, and all of them seem like good ideas. Which one do I do? Which college do I choose? Which career move do I make? These are hard decisions, and we just pray fervently, okay, God, show me, guide me every step of the way. Number 10, he speaks only the truth with authority. I love that he leads us into truth in a world that doesn't always want to embrace truth or in a world that says, you have your truth, you have your truth, you have your truth, I have my truth. In a world where there is no absolute truth seemingly in our culture anymore, oh, there's truth. And the Spirit of God will guide you into it, will speak it into you, will lead you to it if you follow him. Number 11, he will declare to you future things. I mean, it says so right in the word that he, the things to come, Jesus said. He will declare to you the things that are to come. And you know what? I would love to try to pontificate about that and explain that to you. But Jesus just kind of let it out there, just, just kind of rolled it out there to his disciples. And I think that we should feel that tension too. The Holy Spirit will declare to you the things that are to come, period. And maybe you've experienced something like that. Like you can almost envision what's going to happen if I turn this left turn A and then the right turn B, the thing I'm thinking about doing that I think I probably want to do. But then I'm, I'm feeling that if I do that, this will happen. And I'm being kind of warned about that. That's the spirit in you. And that's awesome. And then lastly... He will glorify Jesus. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let me re-summarize. Here's what's cool. Here's what's true about the Spirit. And because if you place your faith in Jesus, He is in you and He stays with you forever, check this out. If you are a follower of Jesus, you have everything you need right now to live the life God wants you to live. You have it all right there. Think about that. There's nothing else you have to wait for. There's no other hoops you have to jump through. You have everything you need right now to live the life that God wants you to live. Let me read to you the New Living Translation of 1 John 2, 27. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know, and what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. The Spirit in you will teach you and guide you and help you. And you have everything you need right now to live the life God wants you to live. But notice what I did not say. I did not say you have everything you need right now to live the life you want to live. No. If you follow Christ... If you've been born again in Jesus, his spirit, the helper, is in you and he stays in you forever. Therefore, you have everything you need right now to live the life, not that you want to live, but that God wants you to live. If I can leave you with four words this morning, it would be this. It's not about you. 
It's not about you. It's not about me. It's never been about you. It's never been about me. And that seems harsh, don't it? I mean, we say all the time, you've heard us say, God loves you, he died for you. It kind of seems like it is about you, (laughs) right? He has a plan for you, he's got a purpose for you. It kind of seems like it's about me. seems like it's about you, right? But check this out. If you go back to Genesis 1, 2, and see that God created the span of the universe that he can fit within the breadth of his very hand, he did it for his own pleasure. And from that day forward, over the entire history of the universe, God has been using everything that he has created to glorify himself over and over again. It's to bring him glory. And if we do not embrace that, if we do not believe that, we're going to be confused until Jesus comes back. We're going to be confused until we get to heaven because nothing else makes sense. Without that being your understanding, nothing else makes sense. Why else would we go through some of the stuff we go through? If it's about you and if it's about me, then I should be telling you right now that if you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior and you believe in him and follow him, I'm going to give you a nice Appalachian Greek biblical term. Everything will be honky-dory, right? It's going to be great, honky-dory, better roses, it's great, I got Jesus, woo! For those of you who have been following Jesus more than a hot minute, you know that is not accurate, is it? I still ache in my joints, even though the Holy Spirit's in here somewhere. We still have problems. We still have issues. We still make mistakes. We still fail. We still have life storms and life circumstances. We go through some pretty tough stuff. I know people who adore God more in in, in a minute than I do a whole week, and I look up to them and think, wow, that's awesome, and then they seem like they have some stuff that they they don't deserve. Bad health diagnosis after bad health diagnosis after storm after stress after anxiety. And I think to myself, well, if they're not worthy of a, of a better path, then who is? And that, that line of thinking just creeps into my mind sometimes. And guess what? It is wrong. It is not biblical. He did not promise us a life of, of hunky doriness <laughs> He didn't promise us that at all. You know what he promises you? He will never leave you. He promises you that he will stay in you forever, no matter what you go through. And here's what's cool. Because of the stuff you go through, he gets glorified. And I wonder, and I believe, if it weren't for that stuff, if people would ever catch a glimpse of him in our lives. Instead, they would see, wow, they got a good life. But when they see us clinging to our helper and believing in him and trusting in him and seeing him at work in us no matter what we go through, then they will pay attention. The Roman soldier, as Jesus was breathing his last on that cross, didn't look and say, that guy must not be the son of God. No, he said, surely that man is the son of God. As my grandma battled cancer treatments, and at Vanderbilt University down in Nashville, traveling from Harlan to Nashville is like traveling, is like me traveling to Mars. It was like a big deal to go to Nashville from where I grew up. And she made all those trips to Nashville. And my dad did not believe in Jesus yet, but he loved his mama. And so she, he would drive her to Nashville for these treatments. And as my grandma loved Jesus, brought fudge to her doctors, and clung to her faith, it melted my dad's heart for Jesus he has a plan and a purpose for you that's not about you (laughs) not even close not even close and you know what that you know what that does for me that frees me it's not about me at all my wants my desires my plans my dreams I don't have to strive to fulfill them Instead, I need to follow the leadership of God in my life through his indwelling Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that's easy. (laughs) We have to die to ourselves probably every night, every day, probably every hour to remind ourselves of that. But friends, if we do that, here's what I believe with all my heart. I believe that if we begin to do that in our lives, we will live like we've never lived before. 
It's what it means to live by the Spirit. We need to start living by the Spirit and no longer for ourselves. I would ask you this morning, do you have the helper? Do you have him in you? Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will not perish but have everlasting life and you are born again. And if you are born again, his spirit is in you. But if you've never trusted in him as your savior, you've never asked him to save you, you've never asked him to forgive you of your sins, then friends, he's not in you. You need a helper. You need a savior. You need a rescuer. Call on his name this morning and say, okay, I'm settling this right now. I've heard about Jesus, but I've never taken that first step of faith. It's time. It's time. Jesus, I need you. Will you save me today? And the Bible says, for all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. You've done that. Some of you have done that already. But do you even think about the Holy Spirit? Do you actually think on a regular basis that he's in you and that you have everything you need to live the life that he wants you to live and that no matter what you go through, he's still there getting you through it? Do you believe that? Once you start believing that, friends, I believe it would be a game changer. It would be a life changer for you. You'll really start living. You'll really start living life but the choice is yours. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you this morning asking you by your Holy Spirit to convict us, to speak to us. There might be one in this room that has never trusted in you as Savior and Lord, and now is the time. This is their divine appointment, Lord, to be able to receive you into their lives forever. May they call upon your name right now and say, Jesus, save me. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart right now forever. Father, if someone prays that prayer in faith, you promise in your word that they are given the free gift of eternal life, that your Holy Spirit will take up residence within them forever. Father, thank you for that. And Lord, for those who have already trusted in you this morning, may they know that your spirit is right there. They have everything they need right now to live the life you want them to live. And Lord, I pray they would begin to live that way rather than for themselves. May I, Father, stop living for me and start living by the power, truth, and guidance of your Holy Spirit. Help us now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.